Welcome to Chapter 4 of Mechanics of Deformable Bodies. In here, we will be talking about the shear in moment and beams, specifically the shear in moment diagrams. So, dito pag uusapan natin, first is the definition of a beam. And we will know the difference between the statically determinate beams and statically indeterminate beams. And for the statically indeterminate beams, we will be able to compute for the degree of indeterminacy. And of course, the types of loading, the shear and moment diagrams, the relationship between the load, the shear, and moment. And in here, sa pagdodraw ng shear and moment diagrams, we will express the shear and moment diagram as a function of x. And of course, we will draw the shear and moment diagram using the area method. Topic 4.2, statically determinate beams. Statically determinate beams are those beams in which the reactions of the supports may be determined by the use of the equations of static equilibrium. What are the equations of static equilibrium? So we have the summation of the forces horizontal or along the x-axis is equal to zero. The summation of the forces vertical or along the y-axis is equal to zero. And of course, the summation of moment is equal to zero. The beams shown here are examples of statically determinate beams. So, paano siya naging determinate? I have the previous video na ginawa and it tackles the determinacy and the stability of the beams. That topic was discussed under the theory of structures and please see the link below para dun sa link no video na yon. And doon ay mas dinetalye natin yung paano tayo nagkukompute ng, ng determinacy and the stability of the beams and of course the frames. Dito sa mechanics of deformable bodies ay hanggang beams lang muna tayo. Okay, so kunting overview lang. Um, since meron naman tayong full na discussion regarding with that, in order for us to say that the beam is statically determinate, we should satisfy the equation R should be equal to 3N. What is R? R is the number of reactions and N is the number of members. Now for this, since we have here a cantilever beam, for the cantilever beam, we have three unknowns here. We have the horizontal force, the, hor the vertical reaction, and of course, we have the moment. Kung makikita natin dito, we have three unknowns and those are the reactions. So we, we have the moment, the horizontal reaction, and the vertical reaction. Now, the number of reaction is equal to 3. And as you can see, we have only one member here and your N is equal to 1. And if we are going to equate this, we could say that R is equal to 3 times 1 and 3 is equal to 3. So therefore, this cantilever beam here is statically determinate. How about this one? We have here a simple beam or a simply supported beam. So mas kilala siya sa pangalang simply supported beam. So for the hinge, we have two reactions. First one is perpendicular to the support. So pangalan natin siyang 1. And of course, parallel to the surface, that is 2. And we have here for the roller, we have one reaction perpendicular to the point of contact and that is your third reaction. So in here for the simply supported beam, N is equal to 1, reaction is equal to 3, so therefore 3 is equal to 3. This is statically determinate. And we have here an overhanging beam. We have two here at the hinge and we have one at the roller support. So reaction is equal to 3 and the number of member is equal to 1 so therefore 3 is equal to 3. This is statically determinate. So bakit siya naging statically determinate? 
as you can see, no, so we have three we have three equations. We have summation of forces horizontal, summation of forces vertical, and summation of moment. Now, kung meron tayong tatlong unknowns dito, dito at dito, therefore we can solve for the three unknowns using the three equations. So we would have three equations, three unknowns. So in algebra, no, we will be able to solve for the value of x, y, and z, the ba? So for three equations, three unknowns, sa linear equations natin. And so dito ganon din. We have three reactions, and so we have three equations to solve for the three unknowns. And for the statically indeterminate beams, if the number of reactions exerted upon a beam exceeds the number of equations in static equilibrium, the beam is said to be statically indeterminate. In order to solve the reactions of the beam, the static equations must be supplemented by the equations based upon the elastic deformation of the beam. So we have here a propped beam, and so propped beam, we have how many reactions? So dito sa fixed support, we have three reactions, and we have one reaction here at the roller. So the number of reaction here is equal to 4. Now, we only have one member here, so n is equal to 1. And if we are going to equate this, so we could say that, so dun sa may equation natin, no, that would satisfy, it should satisfy the equation, no, r is equal to 3n. So we have here the number of reaction is equal to 4 and 3 times n is 1. As you can see here, 4 is greater than 3 by 1. So we have here 4 minus 3, that's 1. So meaning this is statically indeterminate. Now, the difference between the number of reaction and this 3n here, so 4 minus 3 is equal to 1, so that would be the degree of indeterminacy, meaning this is statically indeterminate to the first degree. Now, we have here a fixed or restrained beam. So for the left support, we have here three reactions, horizontal, vertical, and a moment. And on the right side, we have three reactions also, and so that would make the reaction equal to 6. The number of member is equal to 1. So as you can see here, 6 is greater than 3 times 1. And this is statically indeterminate. You have 6 minus 3, and that's 3. To the third degree. Dapat dito mayroon din. To the first degree. Okay, so we have here a continuous beam and in here, makikita natin no, that we have hinge supports and you have two reactions here, two reactions here and two reactions here two reactions here. Itong moment na to, itong mga, mga load naman tong mga to. So, hindi natin yung kinakount. As you can see here, we only have one member and the number of reaction is 2, 4, 6, 8. So we have R is equal to 8 and N is equal to 1. So that would give us 8 is greater than 3 times 1. So, so we have here 8 minus 3 is 5. So meaning this is statically indeterminate to the fifth degree. Sa previous na video na uploaded na, um, dinescas ko to isa isa. So pakibalikan na lang kung gusto nyo malaman yung pinaka details nito. Uh, Paki check na lang yung description sa video na to and nilagay ko naman yung link. Ayan, so we have the equations of equilibrium. Um, Summation of forces along x, y, and z axis is equal to zero. The summation of moments along x, y, and z axis is equal to zero. And so, ano tong internal loading na to? Sa internal loading, to, to be discussed naman siya mamaya. Um, kapag kinat, no? So, you, if you have this member and you cut this 
over this section and my expose natin yung shear yung normal reaction and the moment so pahapiyo lang to kasi deliskas ko naman to before when all the forces and structure can be determined from the equilibrium equation the equation is referred to as statically determinate structure having more unknown forces than available equations called statically indeterminate so if r is equal to 3n that is statically determinate while if r is greater than 3n that is statically indeterminate and the difference between the r and the 3n is the degree of indeterminacy so try natin to ah ito din itali ko rin to isa isa dun sa previous video natin so classify each of the beams shown below as statically determinate or statically indeterminate. If statically indeterminate, report the number of degrees of indeterminacy. The beams are subjected to external loading that are assumed to be known and can act anywhere on the beams. So in here, we have an overhanging beam. So dito, we have three reactions. And... From the formula, R is equal to 3N, right? So we have 3 is equal to 3. So this beam here is statically determinate. How about this one? So we have here... Um, so in here, we have a slider. And pag sa slider, we have two reactions. One perpendicular to the support. And... The other one is the moment. So since slider to, wala to siyang resistance with respect to the vertical reaction sa case na to. Now, so this is an internal hinge. So pag internal hinge, you have two reactions here. And of course, na-expose yung reaction natin dito kapag hiniwalay natin yung beam. No? So yung left and right side of the beam. So, okay, so kung, kung ipapakita ko siya, ganito yung mangyayari dito na. No? You have reactions here and of course, you have the horizontal and the vertical reaction. And ito to, mga to, since nabilang na, na bakit to lang yung bilang natin dyan? Kasi, no, so itong dalawang to, ayun din yan yung dalawang yan. And isa lang yung bilang, so ang bilang natin dyan ay two lang. So hindi na natin binibilang nung paulit-ulit. And then here, we have two reactions, so we have two. And, of course, 2 here. So, the total number of reaction here is equal to 6. So, we have here 6. And, as you can see here, mayroon tayong dalawang member. We have this one and this one. So, we have 2. So, 3n is 3 times 2. And, as you can see, this is 6 is equal to 6, meaning this beam here is statically determinate. How about this one? So, we have a fixed support here. So, mayroon tayong tatlong reaction. And... For this, so we have one reaction and a roller one reaction. The number of reaction is equal to 5. And we have here the number of members is equal to 1. So 5 is greater than 3 by 2. So this is statically indeterminate to the second degree. How about this one? So we have here three reactions. So internal hinge, we have two reactions. Two reactions here and we have three reactions here. So, so, the total number of reactions is equal to 10. And we have here the number of members. 1, 2, 3. So, that's 3 times 3. Because that's 3n. So, 3 times 3 is 9. So, 10 is greater than 9. And this is statically indeterminate to the first degree. Topic 4.3 Types of Loading Loads applied to the beam may consist of a concentrated load, that is, the load applied at a point, uniform load, uniformly varying load, or an applied couple or moment. So these loads are shown in the figure. So for the concentrated load, you have this point loads. And for the uniformly varying load, you have a triangular load. And for the uniformly distributed load, that is a rectangular load. And we have here an applied couple. And for the spandrel, yun yung mga parabolic, no? Yung, yung load, um, ito ay sumusunod. Yung curve neto ay sumusunod sa equation ng parabola.